Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Shadowrun Returns. If you don't remember from last time, our uh, mission where we infiltrated a local castle went tits up. We lost our team leader, Monica Schaefer, and now we're all running with our tails between our legs back to the Kreutz Bazaar, also known as our HQ. Currently, we're in the Urban, as it is known. And it's supposed to be somewhere around here. Oh, here we go. You step inside and the squalor of the disused U-barn tunnel gives way to the warmth of your safe house. The man waits inside, silhouetted against the dim fluorescent lighting. Something bad has happened, hasn't it? He steps forward, revealing a pa pale and expressionless face, like linting off steel rind rimmed glasses. Paul Amsel, your team's fixer and landlord, part deal maker, part information broker, one of the most well connected men in Berlin. His eyes sweep across the team as it takes it as he takes it all in. The grim faces, the hard stares, Iger's fury, Monica's absence. I had a feeling. How did she His face has gone ashen, he swallows, takes a moment to chew on the words before spitting them out. How did it happen? Hang on. Something in a vault security system got her while she was jacking in. It was over in an instant. I've seen Monica hit Black Icy before. This is something worse. Glory nods, her emotions robotic and spare. Monica died of biofeedback induced stroke. That's right. I go thrust a gloved finger into your chest, and this idiot stood by and let it happen. Brushing her finger aside. That's bullshit, Iger. You weren't even in the room. No, I wasn't there, and that's exactly the problem. If I'd been in your place, Monica would still be alive and with us. Instead, I left her with you, and now my friend is a corpse in a basement. Look, Iger. Max is right. You weren't stuck in that basement with us. You don't know how things went down there. So do us all a favor and shut it down, okay? Shut it down? Fuck that. Iger turns to face Dietrich. She towers over him, but he stands his ground. I respect you, Dietrich. You know that. But you don't have my training. None of you have. Monica was good. She was the best, right? But she was also overconfident. She treated the job like it was a game. Do that long enough and you're gonna get burned. Iger turns the focus back to you. If you'd been paying attention, you'd have figured all of this out by on your own by now. You would have known that Monica needed watching as much as that door. Enough, Iger. Amsel's voice, his ho voice is hoarse, his expression blank. Enough. Iger pushes ahead, heedless of your interruption. Her voice remains measured, but there's fire in her eyes. How many seconds passed between Monica's first convulsion and her pluck getting pulled? Four? Five? Do you know how much damage biofeedback can do to a Decker's brain in five seconds? Look, this won't... You don't have to answer that. Of course you know. Monica died while you stood watched, and this is all your... That is enough! Amsel's voice comes out in a roar, and his fist smashes down on the desk behind him. Iger, you and Mags can have it out later, but I have had enough. We need to talk action. Our client sent you into something much bigger than he led us to believe. I want to know why. Right with you. That was supposed to be a milk run. Payback isn't the only reason why we need to find him. We saw something down there. Something we weren't supposed to see. It's fair to assume we're all in danger. He pauses and rubs his temples. Agreed. And to neutralize that danger, we need to know exactly who we're dealing with. Let us reveal the events that transpired tonight. The smallest detail could be important, so hold nothing back. Okay. 
Um, the estate was just a front for what's going on in the basement. Amsel nods. That much is clear. It wasn't a minor enterprise either. The facility took serious funds to build. And time. There was more to what we saw. Places like that don't spring up overnight. And all in secret. The owners, whoever they may be, were none too pleased by your escape, I'm sure. What else do you find? After anything went to hell, we were confronted by orc in military-grade armour. He appeared to be the head of security. That's not much to go on. Do you have any distinct details about this orc that come to mind? Any distinguishing features I could look into? He was an older guy, for one. From the sound of his voice, I'm getting mis mid to late forties. Pretty old for an orc. And he'd had skin grafts. Most of his face looked like replacement material. If the grafts came from a legitimate hospital, there may be medical records. That is something. I will see what I can find out. Do you note anything else during the run that might be of value? Monica lived long enough to say her name, Feuerschwinger. She fought hard to tell us. Must have been important. Ansel seems taken aback. He pauses for a moment before responding. For firewing? This is... unexpected? You'd have to forgive me, this brings back many unpleasant memories. Glory raises an eyebrow. The Firewing. The most terrible of the great dragons. There are those who would disagree, but they had never experienced the terror of living in her shadow. He glances at Glory. You're far too young to remember her, of course, but the Germans of my generation, the name Feuerschwinger is synonymous with chaos, destruction, and death. The dragons of today are subtle creatures, full of patience and guile. Feuerschwinger was not. After her awakening, she went on a four-month rampage that claimed tens of thousands of lives. Amsel takes a deep breath, so he releases it. There is a haunted look in his eyes. Those were dark days. Countless men, women, and children were slaughtered, roasted their lives in the home by a creature legend. No hopes for salvation and no end in sight. It was a horror that you cannot begin to understand. What stopped her? I can't imagine a rampaging dragon would go away on its own. Eventually the fire wing was brought down by a man named Dr. Adrian Vauclair. Well, with the help of the Luftwaffe, of course, but it was an experimental weapon designed by Dr. Vauclair that pierced her hide. She fell in a hail of bullets and radi rocket fire and crashed down in the radioactive wasteland of the SOX. The event was called the Dragonfall. Safe at last from the Dragon's Wrath, Germany declared Vauclair as a hero, our own Siegfried, a modern day dragon slayer. My own family practically worshipped the man. If the Dragonfall was so important event as you make it out to be, I'm surprised I've never heard of it. Those early years of the Awakening were traumatic, either. Not just on a national level, but on a global scale. New species of awakened animals were being discovered daily. Within two years of the Dragonfall, the active use of magic had returned to the world. A new source of terror for the bewildered public. 2021 gave a sudden emergence of orcs and trolls, gave rise to yet another wave of global panic. In light of such turmoil, is it surprise that Dr. Vauclair and Firewing were forgotten? Dragons were yesterday's news. He rubs his temples. Again, all of this happened decades ago. To the best of my knowledge, the story of Feuerschwinger is a bit of historic trivia and nothing more. Alright, so Monica spent her dying breath trying to tell us about a long, dead dragon. Aiga sweeps her eyes across the group, searching for a glimmer of insight. Finally, she gives up any ideas as to why. Amsel's voice trembles with frustration. No, it doesn't make any more sense to me than it does to you. The dragon is ancient history. Feuerschwinger has been dead and gone for 42 years. And there is one thing I do know. Whether Monica was trying to say whatever she saw, it was important. He visibly struggles to calm himself, takes a deep breath and slowly releases it. I will look into this and I will find answers. In the meantime, 
did you turn up anything else of value? That's all we got. That's not much. Amsel nods, his face is drawn and haggard. She's fin, I agree. A basement, a middle-aged orc with skin grafts, and a long-forgotten world event. Wait, we're missing something. Who paid for this run? Amsel looks pained. I do not know his exact identity. I did not set up for a run. Monica did. His face reddens. I... I warned her. I told her not to take the job, but she assured me that it would be a cakewalk. Monica herself recently was approached recently by a man who called himself Green Winters. He used to be a prominent activist in the F state political scene. I never much liked the man, and I certainly never trusted him. But Monica, she would do anything for her cause. Anything for the flux state. He sighs. Winters swore that the data he was after was crucial to ensuring the future stability of the flux. And that was all it took. Sounds like Green Winters is our best lead, then. Yes, most definitely. It's clear that Green Winters has involved us in something much larger than he led Monica to believe. When he finds out what's happened on the run, he's gonna probably gonna rab it. We need to chase him down before that happens. So we need information on Green Winters and we need it fast. There is a man here in the Kreutzbath. Bazaar. A Turk named Altung Borat Gatsi. He owns a little soy calf shop just down the ro road. Cafe Setsi. This man is a purveyor of information. I have done business with him from time to time. And you think he would know something about green winters? Amsel nods. When I discovered Monica's nude association with green winters, I contacted Altug. One of his people had been keeping tabs on winters ever since. As I said, I did not trust the man. For good reason, it would seem. I'll talk to Altug and see what he knows about Green Winters. Very well. Tell him I sent you. I will do what I can to dig through the information that you have uncovered already. Sparse as void may be. Alright. We need to go to a cafe. Talk to a Turk. Uh, spending my karma, spending my karma. Probably need to upgrade decking as there's been a million effing challenges. Decking free, that should be alright. Would like to get up to four, nice even number. But, never mind. And then we have one karma left. 1,250 new yen, so that's an incredible amount. Let's talk to Dietrich. Dietrich turns his head as you approach. His aging face is traced with, networked with, uh, traced with a network of faint scars. The legacy of too many fights over too many years. While he still retains a certain degree of strength and vigor, it's obvious that the shaman you see today is a shadow of his former self. Despite all this, there is an aura of power surrounding man. He raises his bottle, offering it to you. Mags, welcome. I've got a bottle of schnapps that needs to be sharing, and we've got a fallen comrade to drink to. Take the bottle. To Monica. Prost! The liquor in the bottle is crystal clear. As you raise it, you catch an intoxicating whiff of cloves and caramel. Taste of sweet corn and walnuts with a lingering after taste of buttery toffee. You swallow a swig and return to bottle to Dietrich's outstretched hand. He takes a long pull on the bottle and locks eyes with you. Let me ask you a question, Max. What made you come to choose... Uh, what made you choose to come to Berlin? Uh, I have my reasons. Sure as. Come on, boss. I'm trying to figure out who I'm working for here. I think I deserve to know that much. Well, we were the head of Telestrian Security, so, um... Let's just say... I had to drop out of sight for a while. Sure enough, I think most of the team is here to hide from something. 
Not me, of course. Given the chance between hiding from something and punching it smack in the nose, you know which direction I tend to lean. But most of the others, yeah. Even I guess hiding out from something. Really? How do you know? Intuition. Got a nose for damaged people. Of course, I've been spending most of my life running and playing for folks who were damaged in one way or another. So that might have something to do with it. So things got heavy back in the lower plex, and you decided to bail and head to Berlin. Am I getting that right? Um, yeah, a bit more to it than that. But yeah. So you came back on to Berlin and to Monica. Dietrich raises a bottle again, then closes his eyes and takes a long drink. After a moment has passed, you've returned his attention to you. It all comes back to our girl, doesn't it? So let me ask you. Just what was your relationship with Monica, anyway? I know you two knew things about each other way back, but she was always pretty coy about these things. Why do you want to know? Monica was my friend. I cared for her. Dietrich's sharks. I don't know. I guess I was just trying to get to know her better. There's some areas of her life that have always been a mystery. And if you could shed any light on them, I'd be appreciative. I can appreciate that. So, what was the deal between you two? Don't leave me in suspense. We were very close. Dietrich Noggins. Figured as much. Not from anything you or Monica said. I just had a suspicion. Well, anyway, good on you both. Dietrich raises a bottle to you in a salute. She was a wonderful woman, and I hope your time together was happy. Anyway, I've taken enough of your time, and the bottle's almost empty. Thanks for taking the time to talk. For what it's worth, I'm happy you are here with us. Dietrich fi takes a final pull on the bottle, then tips it forward, pouring the rest on the ground. Rest in peace, Monica. We'll miss you, girl. I've got nothing more to say, boss. Let's just get this run taken care of. You can hit me up later if you want to talk. Oh, hello, boy. As you start forwards towards the safe house door, a large four-legged form steps around a con corner. Dante, Monica's dog, an enormous mongrel of indeterminate breed. A low whimper emerges as he enters the room, head hanging low. No oh, shit, Dante. Dietrich shakes his head. Don't worry, boy. We'll look after you. At the sight of Monica's dog, Ansel's eyes well up. He inhales but can't quite catch his breath. He started whimpering about an hour ago. Turned into a full-blown howl. Wouldn't stop. Just get... He closed his eyes. That's when I realized something bad had happened. Looking down to his huge brown eyes, you can see intelligence and sadness. He lets out a small whine and rubs his head against you. Oh, we'll give him a nice scratch behind the ears. He leans into you and looks up mournfully, pressing his ribs against your leg. I guess the dog is going with you, Max. Amsel takes a ragged breath and releases it, then a slowly melancholy smile plays across his face. Well, perhaps a part of Monica lives on in Dante. Return to the safe house when you finish with that I took mine friend. With a little luck, he can help us locate Green Winters and we can get to the bottom of this. He stares at the floor. And now, I think we should all take a moment. His lips tighten. For Monica. Oh, sadness. A lot of conversation going on in this episode, ladies and gentlemen. Very sorry. Sure, well, well, unless you're enjoying my awful, awful fucking voice acting. Oh, we've got a doggy. Um, but yeah, let's uh, have a look around. What do we have? Just appears to be Glory there staring into a bathroom mirror. There's Iga. This is gonna be fun. Iga glares at you. You can taste bile in her stare. She clearly blames you for Monica's death. Something I can do for you, fearless leader. We need to talk about Monica. 
Not right now, we don't. Don't push me on this, Max. One of these days, we're going to hash this out. You can talk all you want about a clusterfuck that killed one of my best friends, but it won't be today. Fair enough. Before I go, I have something else I want to say. Spit it out, then. Let's hear it. You're wrong about me, Iger, and I intend to prove that to you. She stares at you for a moment, then looks away. Best of luck with that, Max. Now, please, leave me alone. Alright, this conversation isn't over. It is for now, fearless leader. She turns away. Do us both a favor. Take the hint and go away. Okay, let's see Glory. Glory is beautiful in a wayfish sort of way. Her features are almost elvish in her delicacy. But there's something cold about her that you find slightly unsettling. What's more unsettling is her chrome. Glory is rocking a heavy load out of cyberware from head to toe. She is, looks to be composed more plastic and metal than she is of skin and bone. In the shadows, individuals such as this are anything but uncommon, but Glory's cyberware is first generation. All of it. Bulky, invasive, practically museum pieces. This chrome was obsolete well before she was born. Mags. Glory shifts her gaze to you, but her expression is as cool and placid as always. Can I help you? Hey, how are you holding up? Don't worry about me. I'm solid. You sure? You look a million miles away. I'll be with you when it counts. Right now it doesn't. Any thoughts of what we should do next? Find our missing client, extract some emphasis. Beyond that, take drops, get paid. I have a question for you, Glory, of a personal kind. I'm not big on sharing sport. Personal reasons. You understand, I'm sure. The agent of voice tells you she's not interested in continuous conversation. Now, well, of course, we all have our secrets, but if you ever want to talk, I'm here. Best not push that one, I think. Best not push Iger, either. Jesus, this has been like 22 minutes of me talking. Christ, my throat. Nur für Mitarbeiter. I, my German is extremely... Extremely bad. Something for Mitarbeiter. I don't know. I'll ask my girlfriend. She's... Fucking fluent. Being all Stuttgartian, Teutonic, and shit. There we go. Leine Neugier. Import shop. Oh, it's snowing. This is a nice break from Seattle. Who do we have here? Mallet Hollier. But draw this check vendor smiles of. With you at practice ease, her almond eyes twinkling with glare from a dozen trid screens. She speaks in a clipped, heavily accented German. Welcome to Data Heaven. Can I help you with something? I'm in the market for something exotic. What kind of tech do you carry? Anything and everything. Need a new deck? Some software, perhaps? I'm your girl. She taps a painted fingernail against a molded plastic on her data jack. Or maybe you're a rigger, like I am. Perhaps I can interest you in a new drone to you, or two. Sounds worth to me. Let's see what you got. Okay, yeah. Well, these are all rather nice. We can buy another Dominus if need be. Probably need another repair kit. That'll be useful. Come on, Dominus. Come on, Dante. Cafe Sesve. Hmm. I think I'll have an explore before I pop in. Who is he, David? A pair of round eyes peers up from you under the hood of a grime smeared winter coat. You recognize him as David, one of Kreutzbass's street kids. If you had to guess, you'd place him in his mid teens, though it is difficult to tell beneath the grime and acne marring his face. You've seen him following Monica around the between runs, chasing heels like a lost puppy. 
She always seemed to have a soft spot for the kid. Oh, hi Max. Have you seen Monica around? I've been looking all over for her. I'm afraid I've got some bad news for you, kid. The kid blinks, blank expression on her face. She's dead, isn't she? Sorry, kid. We all are. Yeah, uh, look, I, I want to be alone right now. Tell this Kramer. Oh, the, oh shit. Is that Algy? Please don't tell me he may recognize me. Something about a young elf behind the counter makes your breath catch in your chest. She's lovely to look at, but it's a strange kind of beauty. Her eyes are large and luminous and possibly green. She looks up at you, you can see that her iris is a flecked of iridescent gold. Hello and welcome to Algernon's. Perhaps I can help you with something. As she smiles up at you, her eyes fix on your horse. A curious feeling of weightlessness fills your chest. It feels as though you're floating in a warm, calm sea. A gentle current pulls, up, pulls you close to absinthe, and the ten sensation is pleasant. As you drift, the golden specks in her eyes begin to move. Look deeper. The golden specks in the elf eye, elf's eyes swip, shift and swirl, slowly picking up speed. It's mesmerizing. All at once, the specks explode into light and color. Absinthe's eyes now fill your field of vision, and it feels as though you're drowning in an alien sea. The patterns are traced by the shimmering specks in her eyes, a kaleidoscopic, enchanting, nearly impossible to turn away from. Time to lose myself. You're lost. Your entire world has been reduced to a churning vortex of green and gold. Dimly, you become aware that something is happening. You feel your body being buffeted by unseen forces, and suddenly everything goes black. Oh, fuck. I've been rehypnolled. Slowly and painfully, you struggle your back, your back to consciousness. The shop's old owner, Algernon, is peering down at you. An expression of concern on his face. Algernon stands behind... Absinthe stands behind him. Her expression is one of embarrassment. Welcome back, friend. Algernon extends a help, hand to help you to your feet. Absinthe shifts slightly to allow you to stand. What the hell happened? My fault. My apologies. Sometimes when I daydream, I bring others along for the ride. It was unintentional, yes. But there's no harm done, correct? You'll be fine. Uh, no harm done. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to go stand in the corner for a while. Possibly to cry. Hey, Algy. Greetings, young elf. The elf's voice is smooth as silk. Rich as clotted cream. Something about him instantly pulls you at ease. I am Algernon Half Dream, the owner of this establishment. In my shop, you will only find finest in magical paraphernalia. Now tell me, how may I serve you? I have a question for me, for you, if you don't mind. You're in luck. I have a great many answers. What kind of magic do you practice? Shamanic, hermetic, personally, the true kind. But I sell the ta goods tailored to all traditions. In my shop, we do not discriminate. Now, is there anything else you'd like to know? What's your story? How long have you been in the Kreutz Bazaar? I have many stories. Stories of dancing spirits, raging dragons, of unchecked magic and swarming chaos. All of these stories are true. As for the Kreutz Bazaar, I have always been here, quietly peddling my wares. It is a simple life, but a good one. Now, is there anything else that you need to know? Um, so what's the deal with the funny-eyed assistants? Absinthe is a friend, nothing more. She helps out around the shop. When the fancy strikes her, she is nobody's assistant. And I am no one's master. Yeah, but her eyes? He pauses for a moment, considering. I believe they suit her personality. Now, is there anything else you'd like to know? Yeah, let me see your wares, Algy. Uh, none of this is for me. Probably should move away before Algy notices us. Don't want him telling Telester in Corp that we're currently hiding out in Berlin. 
Absinthe keeps her eyes hidden from view. Please excuse me. I have work to do. Oh dear, I think we offended her. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I do hope you enjoyed that. If you have seen my uh, previous playthrough of Shadowrun Returned, Dead Man's Trigger, well, Dead Man's Switch, sorry, uh, that was Algy. He was there before, kind of, I don't know, it's kind of my head canon that it's the same character and we've just, from the end of the last story, we moved from Seattle over to Berlin, where apparently we were discovered by Monica in the Ruhrplex, which is somewhere near the French border, I'm assuming, and oh, we're growing wheat on the roof. Very nice. And, uh, yeah. Anyway, I do hope you enjoyed that. Uh, send me a comment or a message or a like or dislike, whatever you so desire, and, uh, yeah, I'll catch you again. This is the Jabbering Magpie, signing off for now. Chatty bye.